Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi ramping up the rhetoric on Trump and his supporters saying they lack respect for human dignity. He's so popular with the voters. Well, he's popular among his, his group. It's he's, interesting to see okay. how there is a certain element of the population who will just go for him. There are people we would probably never get. They don't share our values in terms of respect for the dignity and worth of every person. Her comments come as the New York Times is slamming our next guest for, quote, emulating the GOP frontrunner in his fight for nomination. Here was reaction is 2024 presidential hopeful Vivek Ramaswamy. Hey, Vivek. Good morning. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you as well. Uh, Vivek, there's a lot to talk to you about this morning. Let's start with uh, Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Um, 61 percent, in fact, report that they are living paycheck to paycheck. What is your plan for the economic recovery of America? So the clear economic problem in this country is that people have had stagnant wages while prices are up 16 percent since the time that Biden took office. Clear answer. Unlock American energy, the supply of oil and gas by drilling, fracking, burning coal, embracing nuclear These are sensible policies that both address inflation and deliver economic growth. The next issue is that people at home really are seeing prices go up, but we're not seeing economic growth to pace up with it. The number one reason why is that businesses cannot find enough people to staff open positions. Stop using taxpayer money to pay people more to stay at home than to go to work. That's how we deliver economic growth. Combined with stabilizing the U.S. dollar and dismantling the regulatory state, That's the wet blanket on businesses across this country. That's how we will restore GDP growth in this country. That's how we will combat inflation in this country. And I think that economic revival will. That's also one of the inputs to national pride. The reason why we have a crisis of national pride is that people aren't proud of a country where we're all not making enough money in that country. And that's what I'm going to fix with my pro-growth agenda. Vivek, you uh, have had a... Big burst of scrutiny following that debate performance and the media coming after them. We mentioned the New York Times. In that Times piece uh, recently, they said of Vivek Ramaswamy, in clashes with the news media and his rivals, the Republican upstart has retreated from past comments and they say lied about on the record statements. So what do you how are you managing? Everyone's diving into what you've said in the past, positions you may have had in the past and, and things change as you get older. But. What's your answer to voters who say, who's the Vivek today versus the Vivek of things we might see from the past? Well, one that they dug up this week is at the age of 18. Yes, I was asking Al Sharpton a question on MSNBC, and I didn't come out of the birth canal spouting Republican talking points. That's true. I came to my views based on my experiences. I was a CEO who, like so many CEOs, was browbeaten into potentially making statements on behalf of Black Lives Matter after George Floyd died. Among CEOs in America, I was unique in saying that I refused to do it, to say that businesses should stay out of politics, should focus on profits. That ultimately led me to a journey that's caused me to arrive at the pro-American views that I espouse today. And that's why my convictions are deeper than a standard politician who will recite, let's say, the slogans provided in a binder by their super PAC. That's not me. I'm an independent patriot who speaks the truth. And I think that that's why I've been so clear and my convictions are so strong. I don't say things the the way a standard politician does, but I think that's why we're actually having success in this race. There's no doubt. You you state these principles clearly, Vivek. But I do think the question is, and it's for many on the right, Vivek, is when did you make that transition to Pete's point? I've been to your website where you address many of these issues. I don't know whether or not they're regarding masks or climate change or whatever it may be, Vivek. There does seem to be a transition in your political ideology. And that makes people question, is it legitimate or is it convenient? So when did this transformation take place? Well, I think you all have known this through my journey. It started on 2020. I mean, I was apolitical before 2020. There were years, many people pointed out in much of my 20s, I didn't vote. That's accurate. I was disillusioned by partisan politics. I voted libertarian in my first election, and I sat it out for McCain and Obama and even Romney and Obama. But I actually came to this in 2020 when, as I said, I was a biotech CEO. What we saw with the Black Lives Matter protests across this country, that was also the year that I brought my first son into this world. That's what gives me a deeper conviction. I don't think of myself as a standard political partisan. 
I think of myself yeah. as standing for this pro-American agenda. And when your experiences bring you to your views, you hold them that much more strongly. And over the last three years, there has been no more powerful advocate in this country against woke capitalism, against the toxic ESG agenda. And also somebody who's not just writing books about it, but doing something about it. Yeah. I started a company called Strive, which is the leading competitor to BlackRock. So look to my actions and that'll tell you where I'm at. Well, you wouldn't be the first uh, Republican candidate yeah. for president or president who was a Democrat or not a Republican for many years um, before. So that would be Ronald Reagan and Donald Trump um, himself. So but let me get to this, because you have said that nothing has made the GOP establishment or the big donors um, more dislike you and more not want to support you than your position on Ukraine. Um, you've called for an immediate peace negotiations. You want that war to end. You don't think it's in our interest. I want to know why you think it makes the donors and the establishment so angry. And two, I want to know if you think we're being told the truth about what's happening on the ground in Ukraine in that war. I think we're not. I, I do not think we're getting all of the facts. Even look at the reluctance to actually investigate how our money has been spent. We have zero transparency on where $200 billion of U.S. taxpayer dollars and resources have gone. I think that is shameful. So I can't speak for why the establishment is so attached to the idea of further engagement in Ukraine. But my top job as U.S. president when it comes to foreign policy is to assert American interests while keeping us out of World War III. The thing I worry about is we have no idea what Russia's red lines are right now. We are I worry sleepwalking our way into major conflict with a nuclear power. That's a problem in this country right now. And I think while we should use those resources to protect our own southern border, I also worry that we're driving Russia further into China's arms. It's not 1980 anymore. The top threat we face is communist China, not Russia. We need to focus on getting Russia out of China's camp. And I worry that our further engagement in Ukraine is doing the exact opposite while increasing the risk of a conflict that I do not think that we should be in. And I'm the only candidate willing to say it. Well, you say things so well. I think that's why people are worried. It's sometimes it just seems too good to be true. Um, and I think that's why some people have come after you, including Chris Christie, who said you sounded like chat GPT. Um, but a lot of people are liking what you're saying. I think that's why you're seeing a lot of success and you're having a moment. And you're going to have to face that scrutiny. Um, and we wish you luck. Yep. Thanks, Vivek. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Good seeing you. Good mm -hmm. seeing you. Are right, coming up. Countdown to kickoff. Abby.